Welcome to this introduction to pattern matching. In this tutorial, we will take a look at how we can use uh, regular expressions to find interesting uh, sequences into event data. Let's take a look at uh, the contents of this tutorial. Uh, first, I will give a short introduction to regular expressions. Then we'll take a look at how we can load event data using Cloppy library. Uh, next step will be uh, how we can apply regular expressions to the event data and how we can prepare the event data to, uh, to make it possible to do the regular expression matching on it. And then we will apply uh, that technique to find the assist of a shot. And uh, next step will be to make it a little bit more difficult and also introduce uh, zones into the data so we can uh, uh, build patterns that include uh, specific zones. And final step will be uh, how we can plot those uh, results. So let's first have a look uh, at regular expressions. You might already uh, know them. Um, and uh, they are mostly used to match um, strings. So we define a pattern and uh, see if a string matches that pattern. And in this case, I um, have a string containing a Dutch zip code and I defined um, a pattern that should or should not match it. And let's uh, run this one. In this case, it will show that uh, it's a valid match. Let's look at a different example. Uh, in this case, um, it's not a valid zip code because it contains uh, five digits instead of uh, four. And as you can see in our pattern uh, definition, uh, we would like to see four uh, digits followed by two capital uh, letters. And in this case, when we run it, we will see there's no match. If you would like to know uh, more about regular expressions itself, um, there are plenty of tutorials about that topic, so we'll not go um, into that during this tutorial. Um, and next step will be searching for patterns. So in the previous step we we're able to see if a certain string matches a uh, pattern, but now we will take a look at can we also use patterns to search for uh, sequences. And in this case, I create a string uh, containing some some valid zip code, some random names, um, and some invalid zip codes. And let's see what happens when we run it. In this case, you, you can see that. Um, it, it will contain, uh, the results contain the, the valid zip codes. And this is interesting. So we are able to specify some kind of pattern and uh, input a, yeah, a string or at least some kind of data. And let this library uh, search for matches. So that's, that's interesting. And Next step will be, is there a way that we can apply this technique to event data? And, and what do we need to do to make it work? But first, let's have a look at event data. In this tutorial, we will use uh, Cloppy, because that saves me a lot of time uh, to, to build a parser and think about the format uh, of it. Um, and uh, I'll use the, the steps from OPA dataset. Uh, I can easily load it um, just to use the dataset.load stats bomb and it gives me uh, a match from the open dataset. In this uh, case it's a, a match from uh, Barcelona. And this is the one that we'll use uh, in this tutorial. Now let's have a look at the event data itself. So if we uh, look at uh, just a random event from the data set, 
um, and, and print all the uh, uh, data it contains, then uh, it will look like this. So each event contains a period, a timestamp, ball owning team, uh, if the ball stays alive, uh, some more information about the team and the player, also the coordinates uh, over here. Uh, more interesting things is like uh, what, what was the type of the event and also what was the result. So that's interesting. This is part of the, um, the event data set that's returned by Cloppy. But if you would like to use regular expressions um, on this data set, yeah, we need to, to do something with the data because it's a pretty complex um, object and there's no way that we can just run a regular expression on top of it. So let's see what we need to do. Well, we could change or go from this event into just the letter P. And the P is just because it's a pass in this case. And if you would do it for a whole sequence of passes, it might look like this. So a lot of P's and then a letter S and then some more later. So this sequence here, marked by the yellow box, is actually uh, in this string also marked with the yellow box. And this way, we are able to apply regular expressions um, that are usually used for string matching. But how can we go from an event to this string? I call this an encoder. And how will this look like? Well, we have an encoder function and we give it an event an event as an event name. So we check if the event name is a pass, then we will turn the letter P. If it's a shot, then we will return the letter S. And this will, in the end, um, result in a string looking like this. So a lot of passes over here, then a single shot, and then some more passes. Okay, so now we went from, from an event to a single letter. It's, it's interesting. Okay, let's have a look if what, we, what else we need. A matcher. Well, yeah, this one is, is a bit more complex. I will uh, show you all the code, um, at least uh, add a link to this tutorial uh, to exact code, but what we do is uh, encode all the events to just a single uh, character and um, use a regular expression library from Python to search for it and then in the end return a list of lists of events. So let's call this one a single match. Um, so we return a list of matches. Let's see how this how this works. So in this case, um, this is my encoder function again. This is my my matcher. I pass the encoder to this matcher, so it knows how to go from an event to a single uh, or to a string, and then we tell it to to search for it. And in this case, this is my pattern. I would like to. Uh, search for. So first a pass and then a shot because that's how I encoded it. When it's a pass use a P, if it's a shot use a letter S. Uh, it found 27 results. It was pretty fast. That's also interesting. Um, let's have a closer look at the results. So I use the two pandas function that goes can go from the event data um, from the data set 
to uh, to a pandas data frame it's not totally readable but we can see at least in the event type there's a pass followed by a shot but hmm, let's see if we can do a, a little bit of better way of printing it so in this case uh, I will go use the same to pandas function add some more columns like the, the player name team name uh, the coordinates and only print uh, some columns of the data frame. Let's have a look at uh, data art that looks way better. So here you can see what I found was a pass followed by a shot. Again, a pass and shot. Uh, pass shot. Well, that's it's interesting. So I think it it, it works. But if we take a closer look to it, we will see that there are certain results that are interesting. So result number two, there's a pause and a shot, so that, that matches our pattern, it's great. And again, this one, pause and shot, also correct, pause and shot, also correct. So that's actually awesome. But the team names, that's interesting. Because this one uh, is uh, by uh, Deportivo and the next one is by Barcelona. And that's not really what we want. But that's exactly what we searched for. Um, so we need more information in our, in our encoded data. So that's why we want to add teams. So you can remember this one, this part of the encoder where we check if it's a pass and if it's a shot. Um, but instead of just returning the P or the S, we will put it in a variable and add some more information to it. So in this case, we will add another letter for the home team and another one uh, for the away team. And again, uh, we create a matcher, but this one with the team included. And let's take a look at how that works. Yeah, so that's interesting. Now we can uh, use a more complex uh, pattern. So what happens here? First, we will search for a pass, followed by a uh, away team or home team, then a shot, and this one is pretty interesting. This one uh, is a reference to this one. So this pattern will match a pass by, for example, the away team, then a shot, and then the shot must be also of the away team. And same applies if the first one matches uh, the home team, then the shot also needs to be of the away team. And then we will see, let's take a look at this column, that we don't have those weird results anymore. So now all the time the pass and the shot are from the same team. So that's, that's interesting. And we can do more complex pattern matching because regular expressions, the, the, the Python library, allows us to, to like the, the invert uh, one. So what does this mean? Uh, again, a pass followed by um, the letter H or uh, A, followed by a shot. And then this one tells um, the matcher that the next character should not be the same as this one. So in this case it would match uh, a pass from the away team followed by a shot from the home team and the other way around. And that's exactly what we see over here. So you, you see that you can use all the, the powerful tools that regular expressions uh, provide you to apply it to event data. But now we can look for passes from 
a, a match on home team or away team and, and look for shots. But what if we want to also look at the zones? We need some more information for that. And, uh, as we use the StatsBomb data, uh, it's, it's good to have a look at uh, this uh, uh, pitch. Uh, it's from their documentation, also part of the uh, open data set. Uh, you can find it on the GitHub uh, page. Um, and I um, added some boxes to define zones. So in this case, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And you, you can use all kind of uh, boxes, so you can define it yourself. And this is how I uh, define the zones. So it's on one. Um, is I think bottom left, top right, um, but you can play around with it to define other kind of uh, zones. And you can imagine uh, we need an encoder again. So we'll start again with uh, the type of the event. So if it's a pass uh, or a shot, let's encode it into the string, then uh, the home team or the away team is part of it. And then next one is uh, at the zone ID. So that will be one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. And let's add it all together. So it starts with P or the S, then the H or the A, and then with a number between one or uh, one and seven. And then we will build the matcher. Okay, that's interesting. So now we can tell it to search for a pass, one or multiple, because that's what uh, the, the plus sign means. In zone uh, one, uh, that should result in a shot, and both from the home team. And that's, that's interesting, because now we can see, well, there uh, it matches over here, uh, just a single uh, pass uh, followed by a shot, but in this case, there are two passes, both in the same zone, and then uh, results in a shot. And in this case, there are even more passes, all in the same zone, in zone number one, and then results in a block shot. And we can do even more uh, complex uh, matches uh, here. Uh, in this case, uh, I don't really care about what zone it is. That, that's the, the meaning of this dot. So dot means uh, match anything. Um, so I want uh, one or two passes in, in I don't really care what zone, followed by a pass um, in zone two, three or four. Um, it's like central, uh, center of the field, followed by a shot in the penalty area. And well, this gives me some some results. So in this case, we will see that, well, I think it falls a bit off screen, but uh, uh, some results. Let's see how many there are. So seven results. So that's, that's interesting. Um, but as you can see, there are always uh, all kind of uh, patterns possible uh, to search for for certain uh, combinations of, of events. So in this case it will just match a pass in this area or maybe I would uh, go from um, uh, the more outer zones, uh, zone 1 and 5 followed by a shot over there. You can just run it and uh, just in a few milliseconds we get the results so that would make it possible to for example measure how often things happen um, and in this case you would see that uh, shots from um, uh, the penalty area uh, most of the times have an assist outside of uh, zone uh, one or five, so most of the times it will be two or two, uh, three or four. 
The next step would be to actually plot the results because all those tables don't really um, give me a lot of, well, it already give me some insights, but it's even easier to, to look at when uh, it's plotted. So in this case, I will use the, the pitch uh, from uh, MPL soccer package. Uh, I use it most of the times. And in this case, I can just pass it the results from our matcher class um, and it will create a pitch um, with some colors. I think I just copied it from the documentation. And it will print uh, all the passes of one match. And it will do that for every match in the results. Let's see how that looks like. So in this case, we will look at all passes in uh, zone one. That's um, uh, like the left left side of the field. Um, and it can be just one or, or more than one followed by a shot. And we don't really care where the shot came from, as you can see. Um, so one is from the penalty box, but also uh, from, uh, from a uh, far, farther away. Uh, but we can, of course, play around with it. In this case, I would add zone six and then uh, only shots from the penalty box are included. And then you can see that only this one matches, but you can uh, just play around with it. Um, yeah, let's have a look at um, some more uh, examples. So in this case, I would uh, tell that I want to have a pass from zone uh, 1 or 5. 1 or 5, followed by a pass uh, in zone 2, 3 or 4, followed by a shot in zone 6. And then you can easily uh, visualize um, yeah, those sequences. And I could also tell, well, I don't really care where the shot came from. And well, in this case, uh, it doesn't really change anything. Um, I could also tell it to, I don't care where the assist came from. And that will result in, in some more passes. Um, so there are plenty of, of, of ways to play around with it. And of course, you can also do the same for the opponent team. So let's take a look at where all the assists came from. Um, so we tell it to uh, look for a pass uh, from the away team in any zone, uh, followed by a shot from the away team. Oh. And then you'll see, uh, well, they had only two shots um, and where the assist uh, came from. You can imagine that you uh, can also play with the encoder to include the results. So maybe if a pass was complete or not, or if the shot was a goal. Uh, and yeah, you can use it to, to search for, uh, for interesting uh, sequences. And you can imagine that you could also use those results to export it to your uh, uh, video analysis tool uh, to, uh, to have a way to go from uh, a pattern uh, to, um, yeah, to the video itself. Uh, well, that's the end of this first tutorial. Uh, in the next uh, tutorial, uh, we'll go uh, into more detail and if there are different ways to, uh, to define those uh, uh, patterns and also include things like uh, time. Uh, so we can look for patterns where passes have a uh, certain amount of time between them. Um, you can um, think about if you lose the ball, how fast did you recover it? Uh, because that's not really easy to do with this uh, type of matching. So for the next uh, video, uh, we will look into uh, that topic. Um, and I have to say, thanks for watching. And um, yeah, you can find us uh, well, the, the PySport, you can find us on Twitter, Discord, uh, GitHub, our documentation for Cloppy. Thank you.